Enteric arthritis, which is also called inflammatory bowel-associated arthritis, is characterized by joint inflammation in the context of either Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. It's classified into a group of autoimmune conditions which I call the pair diseases. They're formally described as the four types of seronegative spondyloarthropathies and include psoriatic arthritis, enteric arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, and reactive arthritis. All of these are associated with a specific gene called HLA-B27. Its pathogenesis requires a genetically susceptible person who's exposed to environmental factors which triggers an autoimmune response. We think that this disease involves a disruption of the normal gut mucosal barrier. This might induce a process called molecular mimicry, where an immune response to a gut-derived antigen cross-reacts with normal host proteins. There's also evidence that leukocytes traffic between the colon and the affected joints, with cells like mucosa-associated invariant T-cells being found in patients' joints and synovial fluid, which is certainly not the right place for them to be. The clinical features of enteric arthritis are indistinguishable from those of ankylosing spondylitis, its pair sister disease. Interestingly, this arthritis runs a course independent of the bowel disease, and in some patients, it might even precede the onset of IBD. The arthritis usually affects the sacroiliac joints first and then progresses to other areas of the spine. This causes morning stiffness and night pain, which is improved by exercise. One of its hallmark features is enthesitis, which is the inflammation at the sites of tendon and ligament attachment to bone. Extra articular features include erythema nodosum, uveitis, and pyoderma gangrenosum. This is a rapidly enlarging, very painful ulcer characterized by dense infiltrates of neutrophils. When investigating enteric arthritis, remember your lab test will reflect both the inflammatory bowel and inflammatory joint condition of your patient. Bloods might show a high CRP and leukocytosis. Iron deficiency might reveal an underlying anemia of chronic disease. HLA-B27 is found in 50 to 75% of patients with IBD-associated axial arthritis. If an arthrocentesis is performed on one of the joints, the synovial fluid usually shows an inflammatory picture. Radiologically, in patients with axial disease, radiographs of the spine and pelvis might show typical features of ankylosing spondylitis, like bamboo spine. For the management of enteric arthritis, consider non-pharmacologic and pharmacologic interventions. All patients should be helped with lifestyle optimization measures, including encouraging exercise, encouraging smoke and alcohol cessation, and having a good diet. Pharmacologic interventions can be complicated by the fact that some medications will impact both the arthritis and the colonic disease process. For example, NSAIDs, like aspirin, can improve the joint pain but might not be tolerated enterically. Intraarticular corticosteroid injections may be used for peripheral arthritis if a small number of accessible joints are involved. In severe cases, both conventional synthetic DMARDs like methotrexate can be considered, as well as biologic DMARDs like infliximab. Let's summarize with a mnemonic. Enteric arthritis is a pear disease. It's also good to remember that IBD is a pain in the back, while psoriasis makes your fingers react. This helps you remember enteric arthritis coexists with IBD and is like ankylosing spondylitis in its clinical picture by virtue of its proximal axial arthropathy. This is different to both psoriatic arthritis and reactive arthritis, which both involve peripheral small joint arthropathy in the hands and fingers. 
Thanks for watching Townsend Teaching.